Hey detectives, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Janda, and this is my let's play of Disco Elysium. In the last episode, we shockingly discovered that the corpse we thought was hanged all along was actually shot before it was hanged, and we're now going to try to follow up on that as well as getting the off site copy back to the lady doing her research in the church. Uh, so, also, alright, hold on, let's, uh, what do we, what else? Items, tools, we have the Kvalsund multi-tool. We have no further use for this stupid pry bar. Now that I have this thing, <laughs> it's freaking massive. Um, what, do I have any other, uh, let's see here. I can't examine these, these are just items. Um, run of wood. Intricate these, right? web of the pattern still yeah. cut. The worn map. The face of King. F just checking out. Police for badge. Sure. And we yeah, I've looked at that. It's just a racist mug. What's. You stare. The note is written with a blue pencil. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. Huh. A 12 to 40 month. I don't really feel like perhaps people could be watching me here, but okay. There's no way to list a pawn shop. Oh, I should go to the tape pawn shop. There. Library. Card. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads Central General Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejon, expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Yeah. Okay, the bullet. The bullet mushroomed out on impact. It now looks more like a fanciful jacket button than something that can pierce skin, flesh, and bone. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Bullet. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. It wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. What do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In yes. conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. The closely. jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark grey core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's a huge caliber. I think it's rather small, actually, no? Maybe it's moderate. Um. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. Or? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? Oh, five millimeter is definitely small. I don't know. I was thinking how to convert it to inches, but you know, it's definitely small caliber. Yeah. Uh. Jacketed bullet, close to five millimeters in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find the gun that shot it. Based on those plus ones, am I carrying the gun that shot it right now? A rifle. Oh god, I sold it already, didn't I? Oh, Your geez. bullet looks to be an old 4.46 pawn shop. From the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique. Or a retrofitted antique. Make. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belmagrave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti-centennial revolution 50 years ago. Anyone still making them? No, 
But Zeliga, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Bell McGrath rifles these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for a well-preserved antique, most likely. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? Probably a Bell McGrath rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech-loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachon, really. Oh, no. Sure, there's some arms trafficking, but the laws prohibiting the use of breech-loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective, from what I've seen. Okay, so it's a form of mass gun control that's keeping everyone to muzzle loaders. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military-grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting? Peacetime law enforcement to front-loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. Makes you consider every shot, huh? I like it. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. Could be a problem, But huh? back to the investigation. Hmm. Looking for an antiques enthusiast? Doesn't seem that likely, but we'll check out all possible leads. Next step, finding the gun itself. Okay, I think we're good on the bullet then. Uh, I might need to go buy the gun back from that pawn shop. <sighs> Oopsies. Oh wait, that pawn shop gun was broken, wasn't it? Actually, now that you mention it, maybe it was. Okay, let's try to open this. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. I got it still only 17%. I mean, I know I'm bad at physical stuff. But... The ice squeaks beneath your Kvalzun multi tool, but your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before, and it's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. I mean, is it gonna get any more, like? This orange machine. It's unlikely I'm gonna bulk up significantly. Is it gonna get any easier to open? Working firearm. Was there, were there other things I had to open? There was one door way up north, but there was more than that, I think. Let's go talk to this lady and maybe to the pawn shop. How's it going, Poissons? Hello again, esteemed officer. Oh, goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why'd you stop? She smiles and not. What if I want to buy. An adventure game. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. Lousy auras there. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals. Let me buy they, if you say so, but you better stay away from those immoral occult rituals. Let me buy Susan Eight. Wonderful too. choice, sir. A wholesome family game. Thanks, Blissons. Um. Uh... Okay. Let me find the pawn shop. I don't think that that was a working gun that I saw. Oh, actually, do you know anything Vigilance about Vigilance officer, uh... what can this old carabineer do for you? No. Can't pass this white check. Uh, pawn shop. I'm pretty sure the gun I sold to them was broken, as I think about it, but not 100% on that. Also, are there any clothes and such salt shirt. here that would be... All other shirts pale in comparison to the muscular man with antlers and immense zweihanders. Hmm. 
Yeah. Well, that could be handy, actually. I could put it on to increase my physical power. You know what? I have gear I could put on to try to break that thing open. Okay. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay. But please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. What the heck, I'll take Welcome it. to Helmdahl, officer. Twist physical instrument, it can't be that bad. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Should harm I buy and a whole boombox? A typical uh. Martinez streetlight sits among... Why would I buy this? How would I even get 700 real? I'm not even close you see to rows of toy real. soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the Did I mention right? that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Yeah, I've pretty much bought out the pawn shop now. The boombox is uh, on the shelves. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything. Wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Music aside, this could theoretically have actual value as a tool. Officer, the flashlight, please. I'm sorry, Roy. I'm forgetting. Top of the morning to you. How may I be of service? This, uh... You know, know anything about my missing sure gun? Sure thing. Remind me, uh... Any idea where I can find the buyer? My apologies, officer. A needle right, in a woman. haystack. There is nothing. My apologies. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing. She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept truth be told. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia. And now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? You're right that she could cast aspersions on the force. Sure. It's then. the woman, then. I didn't remember properly who he said bought it, but it must be, it's probably the female trucker that we're looking for. The party boy. Have you tried it before? Oh right, that's the, the truck. Nope, steps I'm not away. Buy he trucks. won't be your knock, but he won't be thrilled about this either. If you say so, here you go, man. Oh, sorry. I Didn't respect your decision, officer. Uh, of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. Okay. Uh, let's step outside and play the tape then. Just spent most of my money in this last two shops, but that's fine. I haven't seen that much to spend money on other than random gear from shops, so... I could buy from this guy too, but hold on. Let me, see. Well, let me keep a little money. Uh, um, okay. What am I doing with this headless foul rider? It's just lucky. I don't know. Uh, yes, tape. Let me play. Where, where, where's the tape? This one. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. You Wait. press the large button marked Commencer, and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Let's hold it at a harmless distance. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within Speak. seconds you know, this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it, a click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Could I sing this for karaoke? I totally could. Of course could. you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it, like, a million times. Sweet. Yep, they're all here. All three verses. Three and verses? The B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. 
Well. Gott, you have to convince Gott to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. This is important to my development as a superstar. As you remove the tape from the boombox, he doesn't say anything. Honestly, imagine your poor Kim following me around as I do all this random non-case related bullshit. <laughs> Okay, now what? Oh, you know what? I could, uh... Call Alice again, maybe. Oh, who the hell are you? What are you doing messing with Kim's car? Get out of here. That's one brutal motor carriage. Says the young man with... That written on his back. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan. Fuck the world. A snazzy shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property, seriously. Yeah. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified Skulls right now... Skulls? Now there's a strong organizational title. Who the hell are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or Skulls. Okay, why are you wearing that on your back, then? Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. Of course I do. I'm just testing you, boys. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertne. His voice rings with excitement. Besmertai, or the Besmerti, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. I see. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. Um, verbal. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. Oh. The lieutenant's oh. voice is as calm as usual. A testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. I see. You know Cindy the Skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. Yeah, a true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He has, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Hmm. I see you kids are into an Nordic dance music. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! Be wary of the abyss. His blonde friend adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. Oh. A threat? Good, I like this. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much, I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Ooh, Kim, playing bad hey, cop. uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Yeah, why aren't there more skulls around? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. 
Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Dude, you realize we're cops, right? Yeah, we are. Hey, are you part of Skulls or not? We're not franchise Skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. I just think they'd accept you. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. I see. But in a non-threatening and definitely <laughs> legal way. The other one quickly adds and whispers something to his friend. We'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Yeah, enough about this mm -hmm. skillery. Uh, what's with the jackets? What about them? Well, why do you have fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one. For so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. Okay. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else entirely? To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... That is not a good metaphor. You get more fish in a shorter time. And, for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Are you an incel? Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. You I hate to it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Does he? Okay, why does your jacket have that written on it? Well... First off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. That's nice. The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. What? What I mean by this is, we are all piss f and that the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even if it's rather narrow. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Nope, pretty sure it's a coincidence. Your lack of imagination is baffling, but you do make up for it with, yes, questions. You know anything about the murder? Murder? Yeah, man was hanged in the backyard. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Nice. Also... He was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Ah, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. But you didn't know shit. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind the hostel? Okay, fuck What world. if it's art? Or just a mere specter? Maybe it's true. The hanged man is merely a prop in the performance. We are the audience, and the artist is hiding somewhere in the dark. Nope, guys. Pretty sure man's dead and we need answers. What do you think we know? Ask for the jackets. These guys aren't scary. You're... Not scary. I have nothing to work with here. It's either begging or bullying. Or both. Just ask them, maybe. Gentlemen, I need your jackets. Uh, why? Oh man, look at the shit I'm wearing. Yeah, like you said, total shit. What about it? There's a spark of sympathy in the youth's eyes. didn't say that. Look, I need to... 
I'm wearing horrible clothes to catch horrible people. It's depressing. The lieutenant man. looks down at his bomber jacket and shrugs, obviously content with his uniform. Hey, come on, please, Fine. man. Oh shit! Fuck it. I got Here. super insulting. Take it then. I can't. Jacket. It's true. He simply can't. It's called empathy. Wow, I did not see that coming. You better wear that jacket with pride. Uh, I don't actually want it. You're not getting mine. My dad's a lawyer in La Delta. <laughs> of course he is. He'll have your badge. No, he won't. The lieutenant is lightly amused by the situation. Uh, wait, world fucker? You got a rich dad? No. Uh, he's like a... Like a volunteer lawyer. A total bitch. Sight floor and does dishes. You know what, cop? Fuck you. That's not what this is about. You're not getting my jacket. Fuck him. We don't need his rich dad jacket anyway. Fuck yeah, we don't need the other one. <laughs> Got a jacket for you, Kim. I'm not wearing that jacket. Oh, but you could really raise hell. Go undercover hard. I don't think this case requires us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jacket will be useful at all. Well, at least we have it should the need arise. The need will not arise. Oh. Look at this cute shit. How can we become skulls if you go around fraternizing with cops? Let's get the fuck out of here before anyone sees us. Fuck. I'm sorry, man. I just don't like confrontations, that's all. Something tells me you're not making it into the skulls. Okay. Um, let's have a quick combo with the... Uh... Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, anything more about the boots? No world, I'm afraid, sir. Crikey. I know it must be frustrating. Library? I'm afraid that's oh. We should nope, try yeah. again. Anything else, detective? Okay, no, nope, never mind. In the cabin, east. Okay, we'll call again in 20 minutes. I, you know, it really says in the journal, wait a day for this, but nothing. Uh, we can sing karaoke now. Maybe we will. Then I should put some clothes on, I mean some physical instrument clothes, and we can maybe break that thing open again. I actually have several... Oh, I didn't put my proper shoes back on. My authority. Uh, but I have, let's see, that's physical instrument. That's just pain threshold, but hit something. It's minus two, okay. Well, with this included. Oh no, wait, but I can only wear one of these, huh? That's a shirt. That's a shirt. Well, I can boost by a maximum of one. It's probably still worth trying. I'm just not very good at physical stuff. Uh. Alright, but I'm gonna go ahead and end it there for now. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you all have a nice day. This is Sea Lord Janda, signing off.